In 1990, Flames rookie Sergei Makarov would take home the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year and was surrounded by controversy for doing so. And it wasn't because he was a bad player or anything, but because Makarov was 31 years old when he won the Calder Trophy, winning over guys who were 18 to 20 years old, which most deemed unfair. Because of his win, the NHL would make what is often referred to as the Sergei Makarov Rule. That states that players younger than 26 years old on September 15th of their rookie season can be considered as a Calder candidate. Makarov is iconic for being the oldest rookie of the year. But what if I told you that Makarov wasn't the oldest rookie to ever debut? In fact, the oldest rookie we'll be talking about was 7 years older than Makarov when he finally entered the NHL. I was able to find 4 players who began their NHL careers extremely late, and will be going from youngest to oldest to keep things organized. Starting things off in 1969. 1969 was a big year for forward Bob Barlow, who at 30 four years old, was still playing hockey at an elite level. Barlow was the captain of the Vancouver Canucks in the WHL, and had another massive year, producing 84 points in 74 games. Throughout his entire professional career, Barlow would bounce around the AHL, CHL, and WHL, never getting a shot in the big leagues, but that season, he would help the Canucks win the WHL championship that eventually catapulted them into the NHL. Barlow would get picked up by the Minnesota North Stars, mostly thanks to his success in Vancouver, and would finally get a shot in the league. Making his debut on October 11th, Bob Barlow would immediately make an impact. Just six seconds in, he would score his first goal on his first shot on Bernie Perron, making NHL history, recording the fastest goal to date. Barlow would stick around for the majority of the 69-70 season, putting up some fairly decent numbers. At 34 years old, he would produce 33 points, scoring 16 goals and 17 assists, being top 10 in team scoring. The following year, he would be back with the North Stars, but would only play in 7 more games. Sadly, this time around, his success died down, not producing a single point, causing him to head back to the WHL, this time playing for the Roadrunners, where he would go right back to producing big numbers, even playing one year in the WHA as well. Bob Barlow is interesting as he was solid when finally given a shot, but he was much better in the minor leagues. Which leads us to our next player, who is actually a Hockey Hall of Famer in the AHL. Two years before Bob Barlow debuted, Jim Anderson would get a chance to play for the Los Angeles Kings at 37 years old. Anderson is probably the least notable player in today's video, as he would only play in 7 games in the league, but in the minors, Jim Anderson was absolutely insane. Spending the majority of his 16-year career with the Springfield Indians, Anderson would break franchise records all throughout the 50s that still stand as of today. Jim leads the franchise in games played with 943, goals with 426, and points with 821. And he still stands top 5 in AHL history in a handful of categories as well, remaining 5th all-time in goals and 9th all-time in points. So, so, Jim was actually a very successful AHL star, but how did he make the NHL? Well, Anderson got extremely lucky, as six brand new teams would enter the NHL for the 67-68 season, causing a ton of new job opportunities to open up and Anderson's Indians would become the official affiliate of the LA Kings, being rebranded to the Springfield Kings. And because of Jim's massive success in the AHL, he would get a chance to play in LA. He would play for Springfield for 62 games, producing 46 points before getting the call-up. And some could say there were perhaps some expectations, at least from a management perspective, but just because you're a star in the minor leagues doesn't guarantee your talents will translate in the NHL. Jim, however, wasn't even that bad. In the seven games he played, he would score a goal and two assists, and then just vanished. Maybe it was due to Jim's age, but after his call-up, he would get sent back down to Springfield, where he would play two more seasons before calling it a career. 
Helmut Balduras is a player I was extremely interested in as he stands out amongst the rest. Balduras played in the Soviet League from 1969 to 1977, later playing again from 1980 to 1985, being the leading goal scorer twice in 77 and 84, becoming one of the best Latvian players of the 70s and 80s. His 333 goals made him a scoring machine, making him good enough to later play internationally for the Soviet National team. Balduras would win world championships in 1978, 79, and 1983, but would play in one of the biggest games ever with the Soviets in the 1980 Olympics, being on the losing side of history. After his season with CSKA Moscow ended in 1985, Balduras would retire from professional hockey to become a coach in Japan. Un till 1989, because that was the year when the Soviet players were allowed to play in the NHL, causing Balduras to make a return to the game, actually getting drafted by an NHL team. In the 12th round of the 1989 draft, the Minnesota North Stars would draft the then 36-year-old Balduras due to his international and Soviet League success, becoming the oldest player to ever get drafted by an NHL team. By the time Helmet was set to make his NHL debut, he would be 37 years old, also becoming the oldest player to score a goal, playing in 26 games at Minnesota, scoring 3 goals and 6 assists. After his one year in the NHL, he would retire yet again, coming out of retirement a second time to head back to Latvia after they regained independence. There's still one more player, older than everyone mentioned, that we have yet to talk about. So, why is Balduras the oldest to score a goal? Well, for that, we need to rewind back to 1973. Who you are looking at is the oldest rookie in NHL history, Connie Mad Dog Madigan, who, like Jim Anderson, was an all star in the minor leagues. A five-time first-team All-Star, to be exact, winning Best Defenseman Honors in 1966. Madigan mainly played for the Buckaroos of the WHL, being a consistent 30-40 point producer with an occasional 50-point campaign here and there. Regardless, Connie Madigan was an extremely solid defenseman who got extremely hot in the years leading up to his NHL debut. During the 1970-71 season, Madigan set career highs in assists and points, tallying 59 assists and 67 points, following that season up with a 56-point, 48-assist season for the best two seasons of his career. With the St. Louis Blues having major injury problems during the 72-73 season, they decided to give Madigan a chance buying his rights from the Buckaroos, where he'd make his NHL debut in January 1973 at age 38, being the oldest rookie in NHL history. Madigan would play in 20 games for the Blues, tallying 3 assists, hence why Balduras is the oldest to ever score, even though he isn't the oldest to debut. Madigan's legacy will forever live on due to his historic 20-game stretch, setting a record that might not be broken for a very long time. Recently, we've seen some players get their shot at an older age as well, such as Magnus Johansson in 2008, Jeff Glass in 2018, and even a Zamboni driver, who was able to defeat the same team he worked for in glorious fashion. Three seconds left, here's Clifford, stopped by David Ayers! The Carolina Hurricanes surround him and defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs 6-3!